everybody. Today we will be taking a peek at an example of a sine function in the real world. Here's a quick summary of what this video will be about. We will be examining how a sine function can be used to find the height off the ground of a reflector attached to the spokes on a bicycle wheel as shown in this picture. Here's the reflector attached to the spokes on the bicycle wheel. We'll be measuring the height of the reflector from the ground, which is where the wheel hits the ground. Um, the bike, this is a bike reflector and we will be measuring the distance of it off the ground and how that number changes as the bike wheel spins. The table you will see will be, was created by looking at values on a graph created by Desmos Online Calculator. The graph was made by giving Desmos an equation to graph. The equation came from looking at the information in the problem and identifying what the period, amplitude, and center height is. The information of the problem is made up, however, it is based on online research about bikes to make sure it is close to being accurate. By using sign graph and tables and equations, humans are able to predict things accurately and find patterns in the real world. The graph allows us to visualize how the reflector's height changes over time. The table gives us specific data points so we can identify what height the reflector is at at any given time. And the equation allows us to easily create another graph or table without having to do as much math again. All right, let's begin. We'll examine an experiment that was done where a bike wheel was spun many times so the height of the reflector could be found over time. Here's the data they collected. First off, the reflector is 11 inches away from the center of the bike's tire. Here's a diagram of that showing the reflector, which is 11 inches on the spokes of the uh, bike's tire, which is 11 inches from the center of the bike. Um, the experimenters also found that the bike wheel will make a full counterclockwise revolution every second, as shown by this uh, circle right here that says 360 degrees every one second. They also found that the center of the bike is 12 inches off the ground. Here's the center of the bike, which lines up with this line, showing it is 12 inches from the ground. The experimenters then perform the experiment. Here's the data points they found. The x values represent the time in seconds the wheel has been spinning, and the y values represent how far off the ground the reflector is. At zero seconds, the reflector has not moved at all and is therefore still at 12 inches since it began at the 3 o'clock position. At 0 0.1 seconds, the reflector is at 18.5 inches, meaning it has moved up and is now in this general area. At 0 0.2 seconds, the reflector is at 22.5 inches. At 0 0.3 seconds, it's also at 22.5 inches, meaning it has reached the top of the wheel and then started to come back down. At 0 0.4 seconds, the reflector is at 18.5 inches. At 0 0.5 seconds, the reflector is at 12 inches, meaning it is halfway through its first period. At 0 0.6 seconds, the reflector is at 5.5 inches, meaning it has started to go down, so it is in this general area of the wheel. At 0 0.7 seconds, the reflector is at 1.5 inches. At 0 0.8 seconds, the reflector has reached the bottom of the wheel and is starting to come back up, meaning it is at 1.5 inches again. At 0 0.9 seconds, the reflector is at 5.5 inches. And at one second, the reflector has finished the first period and has made one entire rotation and is back to 12 inches at this spot here. At 1.1 seconds, the reflector goes back to 18.5 inches and is starting its second circle. At 1.2 seconds, the reflector is at 22.5 inches. At 1.3 seconds, the reflector is at 22.5 inches again. At 1.4 seconds, the reflector is at 18.5 inches. At 1.5 seconds, the reflector has reached halfway across the wheel, so it is now right here and is at 12 inches again. At 1.6 seconds, the reflector has started to go to the bottom half of the wheel for its second time and is at 1.5 inches. My bad, I think that is at 5.5 inches. Um, at 1.7 seconds, the reflector is at 1.5 inches. And at 1.8 seconds, the reflector is at 1.5 inches again. At 1.9 seconds, it's at 5.5 inches. And 
at two seconds, it finishes its second rotation and second period and is at 12 inches again and the three o'clock position. By graphing data points, they, the experimenters created this sign graph right here, which shows all of the data points that were on this chart. And by looking at the graph and the data points they uh, created, they found this equation. The 12 comes from how high off the ground to the, to the center of the wheel of the bike. So this 12 represents this number right here. And on the graph, it shows the y-intercept, which is also the center of the graph, which is at 12. Um, the 11 comes from the radius of the circle uh, made by the reflector going around. So this 11 uh, turns into this 11, which becomes the amplitude of the graph, meaning from the middle of the, the midline to the top of the graph is 11, and from the midline to the bottom of the graph is 11. So the minimums and maximums are 11 seconds away from, or 11 inches, my bad, 11 inches away from the midline. And the 360 comes from the period, which is how many degrees the wheel spins in one second. And so because it takes one second for the whole wheel to spin, which is 360 degrees, the period is 360. And that's also on our graph how long it takes for it to go up and down and reach the midline again. So if it starts at the midline and finishes at the midline, that is one period. So this graph shows two periods or two seconds, just like our data table. And here is another example of what I just said with the period amplitude and how much the graph moves up. And that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Um, to make this presentation, there is also some online resources used, which will be shown on the screen right now. Thank you. Bye.